Hey Meeple people, and on today's vlog, we're playing Enigma Beyond Code by Crowd Games. Let's get into it! World War II is upon us. Germany uses the Enigma rotor cipher machines far and wide. The breaking of the Enigma code gives the Allies an advantage in the war, but this is just one side of the coin. The Enigma code is linked with chaos, a non-measurable force lurking beyond the boundaries of our reality. Each time an Enigma machine is used, it brings closer the day when chaos will break into our world. Decrypting the code will prevent its invasion and save humanity. An agency operates in a secret, heavily guarded Victorian mansion in the London suburbs. It has been opposing the supernatural for centuries. To break the Enigma code, the agency has gathered the world's best cryptology experts together, and you're one of them. Your mission is to break the Enigma code as soon as possible while wandering throughout the mansion with its ever-changing layout. At least, that's what you tell the others. In fact, you might be pursuing completely different goals. Hello, Meeple people, and hello, Sarah. Hi. So, Sarah, what game are we playing on today's vlog? Today we are playing Enigma Beyond Code, which is a one to five player game from Crowd Games. They sent us this copy for the channel. Thank you very much. Um, it is a social deduction game um, in which we are all members of a team of cryptologists who are attempting to break a code. Maybe. Maybe there's someone among us who is not trying to break the code, and who is instead trying to bring about the end of the world. <gasps> Gasp. Would you like to know how to play? Yes, please. Okay, so in this game, what's gonna happen is we are working in this house, and the house is comprised of these nine cards right here. Each of these nine cards is a location, which all the players have on this handy little reference sheet here. So each one of these locations is one of these nine cards. At the start of my turn, um, if I am the first player, I'm going to first move this little token on this track. If ever that token reaches the end of the track, then the game will end. And um, at that point, the player who wins is... The saboteur. That's right. Thank you, Nick. So only the saboteur will, will win if we sort of like run out of time. Otherwise, if I move that along and we haven't ran out of time, then what I'm going to do on my turn is I'm going to select any one of these cards and I'm going to look at it secretly. Now, sometimes cards in the game may end up face up and I can interact with those cards as well. But since there aren't any face up cards right now, I'm just going to select a card and look at that card. So for example, I'm going to look at this card right here. I'm going to secretly look at this card and I'm going to see what it is. Now I'm going to put it back and I have a choice. I have to tell everyone what this card is, but I can be truthful about it or I can lie. If I decide to say that a card is a particular thing, as long as nobody else questions me, I get to do what that room would do. So if, for example, let's just say that I said it was the library and everybody's like, yeah, okay, cool. We believe you. It's the library. Then I would get to peek at another face down mansion card. And depending on the icon in the upper right hand corner of that card, I would get one of two tokens. So that's the way it happens if all the players believe what I said about this card. Now, if somebody's like, eh, I don't really believe you, I don't think that's really the library. Maybe they got to look at this card on a previous turn and they know that's not the library. Or maybe they just think that my face looks like a liar's face or whatever. Yes. Um, so they would say, no, actually, I don't think that's the library. I think you're lying about that. And then what would happen is if I were lying, I would have to reveal that card and I would have to take sort of a penalty. But if I wasn't lying, the player who called me out would get a silence token. And that means that on their next turn, they wouldn't actually get to fully participate. And in between now and their next turn, they don't get to say anything about anything happening in the game. They can't attempt to influence others' decisions. They can't talk to people about what's happening in the game. Uh, and the only way for them to get rid of this is that on their turn, they have to take a shortened turn. They don't, again, get to communicate with anybody and then they can discard this token. So what you're doing on your turn is very simple. You're just selecting a card and you're revealing it to yourself only and then determining whether or not you're actually going to say that it's that card or not. If you are, um, if people s believe what you said, then you get to carry out the action of the location um, and play continues until one player meets the secret conditions of their particular card. So I have a, a role here. It's giving me some 
uh, sort of uh, private information, private end of game objectives here. And if I can bring this about before Nick can bring about his, then I will win. Um, so I have this sort of like private goal that I'm attempting to achieve. And throughout the game, I will be um, talking about these cards, trying to manipulate the information about what each location does to my advantage so that I can achieve my objective before my opponents achieve theirs. That's it. Should we give it a try? Yes, let's jump in. All right. All right, well, we're going to jump into Enigma Beyond Code by Crowd Games, and we'll get back to you guys halfway through the vlog. And yeah. Are we going to be able to tell if we're halfway through? I guess maybe mm. if the round marker. Yeah, if the round, if we get to the round marker, if it gets to the middle uh, or close to the end, we can kind of be like, guys, guys, the end of the world's coming. Otherwise, because they're secret objectives, we may not know if we're halfway through the game or not, because we're not going to be like, I think I'm halfway to my secret objective. We're not going to tell <laughs> each other. So if we uh, don't complete the game before we get halfway through on the round track. Um, we'll come back at that point. Otherwise, we will just come back at the end when a player has achieved their victory condition. And we'll talk to you more about this game. All right, so we'll get back to you guys in a sec. Toodles! Welcome back, Meeple people, and hello, Sarah. Hi. So how's it going so far in our game of Enigma Beyond Code? So it's going. Um, we're about halfway through the game right now. We had uh, some cards turned face up, but then Nick said that he had found um, the, the Enigma machine, the Enigma machine, which lets you shuffle some cards and put them face down. So a, a bunch of our cards that were turned up got, got put, shuffled, back. shuffled back and put back face down. So we're kind of kind of back at the start. I have some notes that have been taken over here. Um, and because I saw the three cards that Nick picked up and the locations that he picked up from, I know that, and he does too, so I'm not, I'm not spoiling anything. I know that this card right here, this card right here, or this card right here, of these three cards, um, in those three cards, there is the Turing Bomb, the Enigma Machine, and the Shrebris Phantom. So I don't know which is which, but I know that these three cards are those three cards. So I know that if my objective has something to do with one of those cards, then I need to find them again, but I kind of have an idea where they are now. Or I know that if my card doesn't have anything to do with those cards, I can just ignore those three cards. Um, I also have kind of an idea as to what this might be. Um, I had made a... Um, a statement earlier in the game um, that I, I said it was something and Nick said it wasn't. So I kind of have some information about that. And then this card over here, I also know what this card is because I looked at it in a previous turn. So I have a little bit of information about what the cards are on the, on the board. Um, I feel like I'm making okay progress on my particular end of game goal. How's it going over there? It's going well. Uh, you called me out on some lies, but they actually were true, so you had to have the silence token. I did, several and, times. And so I was able to lie about the next thing, <laughs> or just, uh, you know, find what I needed to find. So um, this is a nice, quick little game. It's recommended to play three games because games go by so quickly. But, um, but yeah. I think we're just going to stick with the one. For yeah, I think we're just going to stick one because we've played multiple games of this already, and it's it's pretty much the same throughout all three. I mean, you play different characters, but it's, yeah. I don't know, I feel like it's just kind of the same way. I think um, if, if we enjoyed social deduction games more, we would probably play all three today. Um, but it's not my favorite thing. And um, while this one definitely has some interesting components um, mechanically and aesthetically, um, I think we're just going to play the one round and then we'll tell you about it and move on to the next game. Yeah, definitely. All right, well, we're going to get back into this and we'll get back with you guys at the end to see who's the winner or loser or if we both lost. All right, toodles. Well, welcome back, people, people. And Sarah, how'd the game end? I won. Because you was a saboteur. I was the saboteur. So my uh, win condition was that time has expired and I didn't have a silence token. So um, we made it through all of the rounds of the game. 
Time expired. I did not have a silence token. And you brought chaos into the realm of the humans. I did. And what? All hail yes. Cthulhu. So, um, I won. Nick lost. That was one game. They recommend um, that you play three games and kind of do like a best of three sort of thing. Because the games go by so quickly. They do go by really, really fast. Um, I would say like 10 minutes or less, probably. Um, we're just going to do the one for today. How did you feel about things, Nick? It's good. It's a, it's a little small social deduction game. It's quick, so I know some social deduction games are like you know, hours or, you know, they just take a lot longer, but this was just, you know, a small one. So if you're into social deduction games and sometimes you want to play one, but you don't want to have commit the time to them, this is a great choice for uh, those kind of players. But for us, I mean, I don't know, it was just, it was okay. Social deduction is not really one of my favorite, uh, yeah. um, what is that called? Themes, you know, mecha mechanics. Yeah. Social deduction is not really one of my favorite mechanics. Um, but I, I liked the theme of this one. I liked yeah. the artwork and the sort of presentation of it. Oh, yeah. That was really... They did a real bang-up job on that. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think... And I don't know that this is really necessarily fair, because you may be able to say this about most social deduction games, but I really felt like this game was very, very similar to Coup. If you've ever played Coup, um, basically in that game and this one, each player is assigned a role or a set of roles um, and you're basically, um, you're basically saying that you are certain roles so that you can perform certain actions. Or you're saying certain places are certain, you know, um, things so you can perform certain actions. Like in the coup where you do the, I'm this character so I can perform that action. Yeah, but so I feel like it was, it was a lot like coup, but a little bit more complicated, um, a little bit more going on, but basically it felt very, very similar to Coup. Um, and I think um, if I was gonna play a social deduction game, while I much, much, much prefer this theme and setting, um, I think Coup it accomplishes the exact same thing with a lot less work. Uh, it's a lot more streamlined design um, and the play is a lot more simple and engaging, uh, in my opinion. Um, yeah, because it takes a little bit longer with Coup than, uh, it can last longer. Uh, this game pretty much just, it goes by real fast. One of the interesting things that I think is different about Enigma Code, Enigma Beyond Code, um, is that th we're working against time, right? Yeah. So we have this sort of time countdown thing over here, and every round of the game, we move one step closer to the end of the game, whether a win condition has been met or not. So that is something that I think is kind of a nice forced end to the game. Um, if players are not making a lot of forward movement on the deduction of the game, um, the game is still going to end in a set amount of turns anyway. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's a nice addition to this style of game. Um, really, really like the theme and setting. I think that's really fun. I know Cthulhu can be a little bit overdone, um, but I think they've brought a nice... Well, I think they just talk about chaos. It's not, uh, yeah, it's it's not essentially necessarily Cthulhu. Like Cthulhu, right? It's like at the end of the world, an apocryphic, uh, um, you know, madness sort of way. But it's not quite Cthulhu, I yeah. guess, right? They're, they never, like, put their, their finger directly on it. But, um... But I do like the theme uh, and the um, setting that they've sort of come up with here. I like the idea that um, we're all, you know, uh, supposed to be working together to crack the Enigma, uh, which was a, was a real code. So I think that they've integrated real world story with, um, you know, sort of fantastical story in a really nice way. Um, I think the presentation is really well done. All the cards are nice. Um, there were sleeves too. We just didn't put them on because we didn't want to cause any additional glare for the camera, but there were sleeves included as well for all of the cards, which is really nice. Um, there's plenty of tokens. There's even more of the roll cards. We're only playing with um, sort of like the beginner rolls that they recommend for like a beginner game, but there's even more rolls. Um, there's enough components for up to six play up six or five players. I think five maybe. 
um, up to five players. Uh, there's stuff included for a solo game. So they definitely give you like bang for the buck. There's a lot happening in the box. Um, and you can kind of choose, uh, you know, your player count, you can choose how much you want to put into to the game, that kind of thing. They also provided some stuff which um, I feel like they didn't necessarily have to and they did anyway. Um, and I felt like that was generous of them. Um, for example, these little notebooks right here, these are little notebooks that you can use to sort of track um, what's happening on the board. So for example, I was in our most recent game, I had made some notes about um, things. Like I said, when we took our, our mid game break, I'd said that these cards had moved around. So I made some notes, I said these three locations right here could be any one of those cards. I said that Nick had said that this was a particular kind of card. He'd said that this was a particular kind of card, but I actually thought that maybe it was this card. Um, I looked at this card, so I knew what that was. So they provide you with these little notebooks that you can use um, for kind of taking notes, which was absolutely unnecessary. Um, but definitely I enjoyed having the little notebook, having a place to kind of like take sort of like secret notes, you know, that made me feel like I didn't have to depend on my memory, uh, which is very bad. So that was nice for me. Um, and I think that they just overall, they presented a, uh, a nice game with a lot of extra content um, that is really uh, really nicely presented. Yeah. If you like social deduction games, I would definitely give this one a try, especially if you like Coup. Um, and if you're looking for something similar, but a little bit meatier, um, I would say that you definitely, definitely should try out Enigma Beyond Code. Yeah, and a little faster too. I think you can play so many games in such a short amount of time, which is pretty nice. But all right. Well, that was our vlog of... Enigma Beyond Code by Crowd Games. Crowd? Crowd? It's Crowd or Crow D. I'm yes. not really sure. <laughs> but yeah, we hope you all enjoyed it. And will you... Uh, My cat's distracting me. Yeah, yeah, you're distracting me. Say hi. Hello. Hi, buddy. Yes. Hello. Hi. Yeah, it's distracting. He, he's going to bring about the end of the world if he doesn't get fed soon. Yes, indeed. Well, join us next time on our next vlog. But until then, toodles!